There's a lot of times in your life where you don't necessarily want to do something, but there is a plan and a purpose behind it. And a lot of times your feelings will catch up with your feet when you just move into action. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. Today's guests are musicians who know the importance of having strong spiritual influences in their lives from an early age, and what it means to continue that legacy of bringing light into the world. Singer and author Anthony Evans and Christian singer-songwriting duo Jenny and Tyler. Growing up as the son of Pastor Tony Evans, Anthony Evans struggled to find a place where he could be uniquely used by God. Today, he shares how encouragement from his parents gave him the freedom to pursue his own calling by navigating his way through Hollywood as a person of faith, and how he's passing on his dad's encouragement of being yourself to readers of his new book, Unexpected Places. Hey there, my name's Anthony Evans. I am originally from Dallas, Texas, but right now I live in Los Angeles, California, and uh, I'm a worship leader and an author now, which is crazy. And I also have the unique opportunity here in LA to work in TV and film and in the music industry. I come from a very, a very unique and amazing family. I'm so grateful for them. I do not take it for granted that I have um, two amazing parents, Dr. Tony Evans, Dr. Lois Evans are my mom and dad. He started a church, oh man, like 40, five years ago at this point. Uh, Same church he's been at my whole life, and my mom has been right by his side. His ministry has, you know, grown exponentially since I was a kid. But he has stayed, both of them have stayed just so down to earth. The same house that I grew up in is the same house they live in now. They love um, being simple, honestly, as it relates to their life, and they've uh, imparted a lot of that to us, to make the main thing the main thing and don't go chasing up stuff that doesn't really last or matter. Uh, I have a few siblings. Uh, Crystal, my oldest sister, is the analytical one. Priscilla, Miss Personality. Um, she, both are authors, both my sisters are authors. And my youngest brother, Jonathan, who works along with my dad. He's an ex-pro football player, but works along with my dad. That's my family. My parents were the same people at the house that they were on the stage. Like that, because there was no difference with them um, from the stage and the books and all that stuff to home, that's why we are solid kids are trying to be solid kids because, you know, preacher's kids are always like one degree from crazy. <laughs> but because my parents were solid at the house, um, we, we, we knew that faith was real. My dad always loved having us around the table. We would sit around the table and he would, you know, we're kids. So he would do devotions with us and Bible verses. And we were all like, what, what's happening? I want to go play. But now, now that I'm a, I'm a little bit older, <laughs> I'm very grateful for that. They really laid a foundation of us knowing that uh, God is the most important factor in all of our lives. Beyond anything else, I believe that now the reason why um, I'm having the opportunities I'm having as it relates to ministry is because of the foundation that they laid. Coming from a family like mine (laughs) and having my dad's name, oh, that's crazy. Listen, when I was 12 years old, I will never forget. I was in Texas Stadium. My dad was preaching at Promise Keepers, which at the time was like the biggest thing ever. I think there was like 100,000 dudes at Texas Stadium. And they were like, the crowd was roaring because my dad was getting to his points, which he's so good at analogies and landing the plane and making everything all make sense. And the audience was roaring. And all I could think while they were in, in total agreement with my dad is I could never be him. That's, that's what I thought, having his name. So there was a lot of pressure, undo. My dad never told me, I want you to be a preacher. My mom never said, I want you to one day be a singer. There, there was none of that. It was Anthony, find your voice. Anthony, do not be... We want you to choose faith over fear, knowing that God will work all things together for your good. We want you to choose courage over comfort, um, because a lot of times co- your comfort zone is where you will honestly get, just kind of get stale as a, as a person, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Um, so I've always been challenged to move outside of that. And that that is where I found my voice. I have never tried to take on the identity of my parents or siblings, because I know that God has created me with a very Um, unique build. And the same thing with you and the same thing with my siblings. You have a very unique design and purpose that only you can fulfill. And once I realized that, it became my desire to make sure that I fulfilled my individual purpose in spite of what my last name was. The discovery of my my ability to sing and and, um, my kind of knack for music was actually discovered by my father. My dad heard me singing. My parents didn't even know that I sang. They heard me at the age of 15, 16 at my church, you have to be involved in a ministry. You can't just go to the church, you have to go and be involved. So as a preacher's kids, we're we're gonna be involved. So I chose the youth choir 
And there were moments in youth choir rehearsal where the director would go, um, Anthony, sing that part again. And and I would, I'd feel panicked because you don't want to be called out, but I would sing the part and he'd be like, everybody do that. And I didn't know, I had no idea that that, that meant I had an ability to sing. I just thought, oh, I just happened to learn this quick. I, had, I didn't know that. And the passion for singing happened when I actually started to do it. Working in Hollywood, it was new to me. When I came here six years ago, I was asked by an artist to be a part of his project for three months. I was gonna be in LA for three months and it was new and fresh and different. And and uh, over the course of time, I've been asked to do quite, quite a few things that are just stuff you will never get asked when you're, when you're leading worship at a church. You know, some of the artists that have asked me, I, uh, and I soon, soon thereafter learned that there is a very delicate balance when it comes to being here and doing what I'm supposed to do, I believe that my faith and my abilities were not just built for inside of the four walls of, of a church. The light that we have, that I have, is is needed mostly by people who aren't in a church. You know what I mean? So I'm always challenged though, to make sure that I'm not compromising my faith in order to connect. And I've also um, had to redefine what success is. Success is not always being a part of the biggest, latest, greatest project with the, with the A-list artist. That's not always success because that fades away. I define success by am I at peace internally? Because you can't go out and write a check for peace after you do the biggest thing in the world. So I approach a project and say, am I going to be at peace when I do this? Because if not, then that's not success to me. I'm a busybody, and so I used to try to make myself sit down and be just quiet on my couch at home and just read the Bible and write down. And five minutes in, I'm, you know, I just, my mind goes somewhere. <laughs> so what I do is I make a point to spend time with God in whatever I'm doing. If I'm driving, I will have conversations with God. You know, here in LA, I'll carve out a drive to the beach and I'll go and sit with him for a while, but I, make sure that I just invite God into every moment of, of, of my day. That's the way I would do it in a real life relationship. I would want somebody to be there with me all the time. Like, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna hang here. That is how I do my relationship with God. I invite him into everything. I'm at the gym lifting weights and praying at the same time. That's, that's what I love to do is make him a part of every, every aspect of my life. Jesus calling, it's well, one, it's concise. <laughs> that helps a lot for somebody like me who, who I need poignancy and I need it, I need it concise so I can have something to, to think about and chew on all day. And that's what it's been for me. But then to hear the, the way uh, Sarah wrote it, the, the perspective that she gave on it, um, the, the way that she spoke those words, the way that she spoke God's words, really, um, impacted me in a deep in a deep way. I have people in my life here in LA, um, in Hollywood, who don't know church like this, but that book has impacted their life. And to watch um, how th those words can translate across all lines, but it's still the truth of God's word, um, that has made me very, very proud in a sense of being able to, to give this book to others. During his time in L.A., Anthony has seen the power of being a light in a dark world, which he reads about in the July 20th entry of Jesus Calling. Do not be afraid to be different from other people. The path I have called you to travel is exquisitely right for you. The more closely you follow my leading, the more fully I can develop your gifts. To follow me wholeheartedly, you must relinquish your desire to please other people. However, your closeness to me will bless others by enabling you to shine brightly in this dark world. Reading this passage, I think about a conversation I had back when I was on The Voice years ago with Christina Aguilera and Jewel. And Christina said to me, Anthony, I know what we do is different, but when I was a pop princess and everybody thought that I should be doing this kind of music and I decided to do another, another kind, I was so scared, but I, walked into what I knew I was supposed to do. And although I had no idea the direction I was going, I didn't realize I was carving out a trail behind me. And she said that to me, and I know we do something totally two different things, but I was like, that's crazy. I know that although I may not know, he will guide me. And then my purpose actually may be to carve out a trail behind me for others who, who, need, who want to walk in this direction and who uh, may be dealing with a fear and can go, hey, Anthony followed God on his exquisite path, and I'm gonna do the same thing. When I first got called to write my new book, Unexpected Places, which I'm so excited about now, <laughs> initially I was like, wait a minute, are you trying to get to my dad and sister? I'm confused, because I'm the singer, I'm the songwriter, I'm the worship leader, that guy. Uh, but then I started to think about 
The people in my life who along my journey have decided to be honest, vulnerable, and transparent with me about what they've been through and how life-giving that was for me when I was facing hardship. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna try this. I have the attention span. I have like this much attention span in general. Like I moved from, you know, it's, it's an issue. I'm working on it. I literally, every couple seconds, am like, squirrel. That's how my brain operates. How am I supposed to sit down and write a whole book? But I decided I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna make the chapter short, chapters that I would wanna read. Um, but my desire was to encourage you in your, in, in your discovery of your specific voice and your calling by being honest and vulnerable and transparent with you. I, I'm not trying to be anecdotal and like cute and funny and just for the sake of that, my, my objective is for, is for this book to have the impact in your life that people had in my life when they decided to tell me the truth of what they were going through. When you step boldly into the unknown, it's God is always faithful to light up the next step. He may not light up the whole path, but when you step, he will, he will light it up. Um, as, as you place your foot down in whatever is next. And in those unexpected moments and unexpected places is where I found the deepest lessons in my life. Your best starting point, the, the place where you can actually uh, start making changes in your life is when you decide to be truthful beyond the facade that a lot of times we're taught, unbeknownst to us sometimes in church, we're taught to act like we're, we got it all together. No, that doesn't work. That does not work. Be true, um, be honest, and also uh, be open to growth and be open to doing what you have to do to, uh, to experience your, yourself at another level. I spent three months of 2017 in total silence, complete silence. It was the most miserable moment of my life because I found out I was overworking and I hemorrhaged one of my vocal cords because I was doing so much. And I wasn't just doing so much, I was doing so much and was sick as I did it. So. I was pushing and shouldn't have been doing that. I hemorrhaged a vocal cord. I kind of listened to the doctor, but wanted to go sing and hemorrhaged it again. And she finally said, you have to shut down. Like you have to stop. You have to stop. And I went through three months where I now I'm like, yo, I was, I was depressed in that time of not being able to do the only thing I know how to do at that level really. Um, but because of that experience and me kind of pushing through that miserable moment of three months, I had to do a laser procedure on my vocal cord. I mean, it was a crazy moment. I not only healed, but I healed up and was in a better position than I was before vocally. And then after I did what the doctor said, I was offered one of the largest opportunities of my life as it relates to Hollywood that I was able to do because I listened and went through the, the time of, of hurt and despair. I stood on the Hollywood Bowl stage here in, in LA opposite Zoe Deschanel as Beast in Beauty and the Beast. And I, that's something that's so outside of my box, but I was able to do that because I was obedient through the thing that was hard. And my desire um, for everybody reading Unexpected Places is to get to a point where you're like, I'm gonna be honest and truthful and I'm not gonna be fearful of what God's gonna ask me to do because I know on the other side of that, there is something great coming. And it always won't be the Hollywood Bowl stage, but it'll be something as big as that emotionally, as big as that spiritually, that will happen in your life when you're obedient and patient in the process. You can find Anthony's book, Unexpected Places, at your favorite book retailer today. Stay tuned for our conversation with Christian singer-songwriters Jenny and Tyler after a brief message about a free offer from Jesus Calling. Are you looking for a way to keep track of your daily prayers along with Jesus Calling? The Jesus Calling Family Prayer Calendar goes right along with your daily readings from Jesus Calling. Each day begins with a guided reflection, followed by a space for you to fill in your prayers of thanksgiving and special requests. You can get your free Jesus Calling Family Prayer Calendar by visiting jesuscalling.com offers. Visit JesusCalling.com slash offers to download your free family prayer calendar today. Jenny and Tyler Summers are telling the stories of their lives through harmonies and thought-provoking lyrics. When the musical duo met at the University of Delaware, they found unlikely partners in music and life. They tell us about growing up in music-filled families, about the important messages God is laying on their hearts to tell through music, and how they're learning to balance it all. My name's Jenny Summers. I'm Tyler Summers. <laughs> and we make up the duo Jenny and Tyler, very original name. Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, we're a married couple. We travel and make music together and write songs. And um, we have three kids. Yeah. So we both grew up in musical families. I grew up as the son of a classical composer and a church uh, music minister slash organist slash choir director uh, who who also would play jazz uh, three nights a week. My mom was more into the folk kind of uh, scene. So she, she brought Simon and Garfunkel into my young ears. Uh, And so, yeah, it was, it was very, uh, very much a culture of, you can do music. I grew up in a military family. We were Air Force. And so we moved every three years. Um, my dad was a pilot. Um, my parents are from uh, Western New York, which is a very um, rural uh, part of, of New York, kind of near Buffalo. A lot of farmland. Um, I kind of refer to it as kind of backwoodsy. And uh, so there's a lot of um, country music and bluegrass music that I grew up listening to. Um, My dad was in a a bluegrass band in college. um, And so he brought his love for all of that uh, to our house. My mom would sing. And so we had um, family nights where we would just sit around and um, sing together and my dad would play guitar and eventually, uh, us kids picked up different instruments. And I wouldn't say that any of us were like fantastic at what we were doing. Like, it's not like we were a super talented family, but we, um, just loved it. And it was part of what really brought our family, um, closer together. It was something familiar everywhere. Um, we went, you know, we always had that. So we met actually at the University of Delaware on a bus that was taking students from campus to a nearby church. And it was, I think, the day before the first day of classes. I was a sophomore, she was a freshman, um, and I was on the bus kind of like welcoming. It was sort of a job, like to welcome the freshman um, as a leader of this student ministry. We started leading worship together and then uh, just started hanging out outside of that. So we just said, hey, maybe we should be more than say that we're dating. Yeah, after and about three months of hours, uh, hanging out for hours a day and pl- not just playing music, but talking about our our lives, our families, our struggles. Um, we, we eventually had a DTR, which I think is still a common saying on college campuses. It means define the relationship And you just say like, yeah, we're dating. I would say we have always made music together in some capacity um, since we, since we met. Um, Yeah. Early on, Jenny was doing her solo projects and I was backing her up and I was doing mine and she was backing me up and sort of like the DTR eventually we're like, this is not this doesn't make sense to keep doing solo stuff. Let's just say we're a duo. We got married in 2007. And when we were getting married, um, or about to be married, Tyler was going to take a job with a tool tool company as an outside sales representative. Um, Because he majored in marketing and I majored in um, English. And uh, he came to me a few months before we were going to get married. And he said, you know, Jenny, if I take this job, I'm going to be working, you know, a ton because it's sales, it's all commission. You know, I'm going to be working a ton. We're not going to have time for music anymore. And I remember thinking, okay, well, I mean, if, if you think you'll be unhappy in this and that, um, we need to have more time for music, like let's rethink this. And he said, I can, um, work at Starbucks and get benefits. And that was very important. Um, I have epilepsy, so health insurance is super important. And um, and I was like, okay, I guess we could give that a try. So when we graduated and got married, we, we didn't take um, traditional career jobs. Like we just never did that. When we know who we are in Christ, uh, when we know that we have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer us who live, but him who lives in us, it's it's a lot easier to live beyond our circumstances and uh, and live in hope and in uh, in victory. Throughout their music, Jenny and Tyler weave in stories from their faith journeys and explore their walk with God. 
One of the tools they use to deepen that relationship is Jesus Calling. The book was on my parents' dinner and breakfast table um, at their house, and uh, and my dad, a few years ago, was like, hey man, have you ever checked this thing out? Um, it's, it's pretty cool. It's these like, devotionals from the perspective of of God, of, of Jesus. Um, and, and it's just a great way to start the day. <laughs> I'm like, no, it, it sounds cool, but, um, I've not heard of it. And yeah, I, I just love how personal it is. It reinforces the relationship, which I think is very, very good. Uh, especially for people who, who feel like they've gone years and years without hearing from God. It does take scripture and it puts it in a way that's It's like, oh, this is a letter from God, and it can be um, this intimate, you know. So this is a passage from Jesus Calling from November 28th. Rest in the deep assurance of my unfailing love. Let your body, mind, and spirit relax in my presence. Release into my care anything that is troubling you, so that you can focus your full attention on me. Be awed by the vast dimensions of my love for you, wider, longer, higher, and deeper than anything you know. Rejoice that this marvelous love is yours forever. The best response to this glorious gift is a life steeped in thankfulness. Every time you thank me, you acknowledge that I am your Lord and provider. This is the proper stance for a child of God, receiving with thanksgiving. Bring me the sacrifice of gratitude and watch to see how much I bless you. We wrote a whole record about um, abiding in Jesus and um, and that passage basically references that. Uh, I think that we'll uh, we'll never never get over um, that message, or we'll never get past that message of um, of abide in me. Through their songs, Jenny and Tyler share their lives as parents, as husband and wife, and as Christians. They draw inspiration from a variety of places, including Scripture. Their song "Waters Roll" is based on Amos five twenty two and twenty three. Tyler explains the vision he is trying to impart through this song. It says, Away from me with the noise of your songs, to the melody of your harps I will not listen, uh, but let justice roll on like rivers and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. God is speaking through this prophet, really, to the people of Israel, and he's basically saying, You are doing all this religious stuff, and I I can't stand it. I, I just want you to get back to my heart and do the things that I love. There are quite a lot of good mercy ministries. There, there aren't a whole lot of justice uh, ministries or missions that I know about. Uh, one, one that we do know about that that we felt really that God led us to is called International Justice Mission, and they um, they work to fight um, slavery and modern slavery and the oppression of the poor all over the world uh, by fixing broken justice systems and. Um, so it has been just a privilege to be able to talk about them at shows and share stories and, uh, vi- and videos and um, that sort of thing. It, it's become part of our, our life. Uh, our kids know about slavery and our kids pray for the end of slavery. And our three-year-old and our five-year-old, I don't know how much they actually understand what it is, but, um, but we just want it to be such a culture – such in our, our family's culture. And we want it to be in our music and really in like our lives um, because we believe it is such a vital part of following Jesus. How do we balance 
kids and, and music and marriage and the rest of life? Well, the short answer is we don't. And <laughs> we're, we're constantly, not like seriously, we are constantly behind in, in something. Um, when, when one area is doing relatively well, it means that most of the other areas are doing pretty pretty poorly. Uh, for example, my emails right now are <laughs> about 12 days behind. I will say though that we are, especially with the music thing, kind of constantly evaluating what is working and what is not working, especially when it comes to travel. Um, and you know, how, how much is it okay for us to be away from our kids? Um, how often can they come on the road with us? We did, um, some tours with them where, you know, it's good for our family unit to all be together, but our marriage was really suffering because, um, on the road with three kids is such an intense, like when, when it's the sort of thing where you're in the car driving somewhere new every day and playing a show every night, it's, you know, it's not like just going on a road trip where you can stop for a couple days and enjoy each other, you know? So it's a, uh, it's intense and we were we're just discovering that we were seeing each other on stage you know because Tyler's kind of managing all the business side and I'm trying to manage the kids and it just it was not it, was, it wasn't good so um, so our solution now is we don't take the kids on the road <laughs> yeah I love being home with our kids uh, and actually we've started touring mid middle of the week so that we can be home Friday Saturday Sundays with our kids man I'm just so glad that we have our family this way and that we have the freedom to be home with them. Um, because when you get to a place where you're really successful, <laughs> you know, the pressure to travel and play is so much greater. And it would be really difficult to be in that position. And I'm pretty grateful that we're not, <laughs> I guess, at this point. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. We've tried to keep a, a loose grip on music um, because we don't want it to be our primary identity. Uh, it's so it's so easy to um, to hide behind the the artist uh, facade, I guess, or to you know look at ourselves as artists instead of as children of God who are loved deeply. You can find Jenny and Tyler's music at your favorite music retailer or streaming provider. If you'd like to hear more stories about artists whose calling it is to spread light through their artistry, check out our interview with singer-songwriter Ellie Holcomb. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we speak with author and evangelist Matthew Kelly. Over the years, Matthew has created countless resources that have brought millions of people to Christ. He tells us the key to sharing the living water of Jesus is to become what he calls a dripping tap. I think the dripping tap is the life of the Spirit. It is our spirituality. It is our, our commitment to daily prayer and, and to reflecting on the scriptures and our commitment to Christian community and growing in generosity and, and, and growing in, you know, the foundational virtues of the Christian life. The best way, I think, to set yourself up is to get that, that tap drip in and, and, and just make yourself available. Do you love hearing these stories of faith weekly from people like you whose lives have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling Stories of Faith podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you like what you're hearing, leave us a review so that we can reach others with these inspirational stories. And you can also see these interviews on video as part of our original web series with a new interview premiering every other Sunday on Facebook Live. Find previously broadcast interviews on our YouTube channel on IGTV or on JesusCalling.com slash video.